that doesn't bring you a sense of community? Do you feel like people are trying to force you to take a side in this silly culture war? Does your media have you feeling too conservative, too woke, too religious, too heathenous, not enough whatever, like a freak? That's because you're not a character. You're a real person. You're messy, and you don't fit into a box. Good news, we're freaks too. Would you like to melt your stress away? Get connected to a community of other misfits? Maybe listen to the misfits? Stop feeling like a lonely outsider surrounded by people trying to enlist you in a war you want no part of. Become a contented member of a community that requires only that you live your best life and leave others to live theirs. Feel a sense of belonging while opting out of the culture war. This is Peace Freaks. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Peace Freaks. I'm Nikki P here, as always, with my lovely wife and co-host and just general cohort, Lizzie. How are we doing there, babe? Shabby. We uh we ditched the kid for a couple of days with my sister. Uh, we were yeah. It was thankfully she's she's going and having fun with with people who are not us at the moment, and, and we are doing our thing here. And you know what our thing is? We took a nap. We did because we're parents, and parents don't always get to do that sort of thing. It was such a glorious glorious nap. I I felt I felt so many. So many feelings <laughs> of joy that I, I was unaware I was allowed to feel anymore. Yeah, it was it was entirely too satisfying. Not just the constant depression of, am I fucking up my entire life right now? And more importantly, am I fucking up somebody else's entire life? Yeah. Because right now, if her life is fucked up, it's Aunt, it's Aunt Rye's time. It's on her watch. It's her responsibility. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. It's it's like taking the weight of of life and just handing it to somebody else for a brief period of time. Mm-hmm. And sure, I'm going to have to be Atlas and grab up that life again at some point. But? In five days. But in the meantime, <laughs> I'm just going just gonna to get all that dirt off my shoulder, you know? Yeah, just brush your shoulders off, eh? Something to that effect. Mm-hmm. So we have a, we have a fun episode today. Indeed. Uh, this is... Not not our first episode necessarily, but we're we're trying to gradually transition into what we're going to eventually become. For those who've been listening for a while, we yeah we used to be a music podcast. Yes, we are. We have waffled around in what kind of podcast we actually are for a while. Mostly, we've just been an interview podcast, I guess, with no real no real crew in mind. But uh, it, it tend it tends to be that I think we like talking to parents. Yeah, and so I think officially. We're just going to lean into that. Yeah, we're just going to lean real hard into that. We're going to talk to, you know, I want to talk to Liberty parents, and I want to talk to people that actually have, like, I really like the midlife crisis stuff that we've been doing. Yeah. And typically that's people that have something that can help, I think, in the way of helping us push our lives forward and better take care of our families. And so I want to do more of that. Um, There's a lot of financial stuff that I'd like to, a lot of people that have, like, financial services, I guess, that I'd like to talk to, or people that have, like, a... A method mm-hmm. that they can recommend advice. Uh, I really want to get Daryl Becker on here. I gotta touch base with him. Nice. He yeah, uh, he does like health help and stuff like that, like helping you navigate the craziness that is the world out there. So uh, we're gonna be having more guests. I, I almost kind of want to move to a two episode a week format. We'll see how. Oh, you crazy, crazy man! I'm a crazy, crazy man. That nap's gone to your head. Well, uh, it may involve like shortening or tightening up. Part of it would be, like I said, I want to have like an episode where we actually talk to parents, and an episode where we you talk to someone who has something. Oh, okay. You know, to utilize. So maybe not super long episodes in that. Just kind of, hey, here's a half hour. Give the sales pitch for what your thing is and how it's going to help us. Gotcha. Because I really want to get help people as much as possible. Kind of navigate being. Weird parents. Well, that makes sense. I guess that's the biggest thing is that I do kind of feel like we're maybe a little left out because just every everything that we do and are a part of is like some crazy subculture. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, a little. So I'm like, well, if we can just, you know, maybe we could be like the, the weird people helping the subculture parents out, be it, you know, politics or, you know, half religious, not religious, religious, but not really religious. Um, yeah. You know, punk kids, ska kids. I want to try and focus on keeping, you know, individuality and maybe being grown ups, but not having to take on the mantle of being a boring grown up, but still being successful at parenting. How about that? I, I like it. It's a work in progress here, people. It is a work in progress. Much like that garden in the backyard. Much like. We, uh, we, pulled, the t- we pulled the potatoes. Yeah, probably too early. I mean, if we're honest. Yeah, I think one of the plants was really going gangbusters, but the other ones weren't. 
Yeah. And so we kind of shortchanged ourselves on it. But, you know, now we know. Yeah. You live and you learn. I mean, while that may be the case, it's not like tomatoes aren't going good and cucumbers are going cucumber crazy back there. They are. I've got so many pickles, which is like one of my favorite statements to make about life in general. So no, no complaints there. You know, she likes a cute kids. <laughs> we ever tell you about the time that we uh, were going through a buddy's trash and we found a novelty dildo oh. in one of our, no. one of our, like it was one of our friend's parents. Yeah, I feel like no story, no good story starts with that. It was like a, it was like a cucumber with like a face on it. Sounds so awkward. So, and then it had like a, it had like a, you know, inside of it. What? Why? This was before <sighs> Pickle Rick. There's no reason for that. There is no reason for it, but it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so awkward. Yeah, it was awkward. She wasn't. A, she wasn't one of the ugly parents either. So it was a another layer to it, you know. Mm-hmm. She was older, but like she wasn't ugly. So many things about your your predilections just start to make more sense there. What do you mean? <laughs> Are you picking on me for liking old ladies? No, not really. Like I'm not I'm not quite to the level of like straight gilf porn, but you know, I enjoy the enjoy the lady. Yeah, you know she's got a got a few miles on the tire. And she's probably got a few skills that uh, the younger ladies don't have. So I mean, you always take the shot with the older ones. To be fair, uh, everybody needs a shot, right? Well, and more importantly, I, so I always used to joke when I was in college about. Because I just kind of want to find a girl with her shit together. That's that's why I like the older women. Mm-hmm. I see. I mean, the joke being that I'm sorry, but any woman that was going to consider dating me probably didn't have her shit together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kind of that that just old trope about any any club that would have me as a member. Yeah, definitely. Uh, any any woman that wants to date me is probably not the kind of woman I want. I I, I should be dating. So you know who uh, who doesn't fit the bill of an old lady. Mm-hmm. Our guest today, Harley. This is true. Uh, Harley is a Twitter personality, as far as I can tell, and is wonderfully deceiving <laughs> in many ways. Because you look at her and you get so many misconceptions about her. Hmm. I misconce- misconceived her height just based on her pictures. There you go. And I'm thinking her of a sprightly little person, but apparently she's taller than me. What are you going to do? Maybe I just wanted her to be sprightly because I like sprightly people. Liz is a sprightly person. I am. I, I am like a sprite, literally. How, how tall are you? Are you like 4'10 or? I am actually 5'2, which puts me, I mean, it's still within the realm of like officially petite, but I'm I'm on the taller end of it, which is weird because I know a lot of like four foot tall people. When did you have that taken? Was that when you had your old hair? No. Because I cannot possibly believe you were that <laughs> You're tall. Like, that is I know how tall I am. It. I know how tall I am, and I look down on you, <laughs> quite down. Hey, you know, we can we can whip out the tape measure uh, after the show and, and just there she verify goes, folks, this. But trying to excite me, talking about whipping things out. <laughs> so, anyways, this was a, a fun interview, and I was really excited to get a chance to talk to her. Uh, she's involved in a lot of things that are perhaps aspirational for us, or things that we've talked about doing, but maybe never pulled the trigger on. And she seems like one hell of a uh, driven person to accomplish the thing that she things that she has. Absolutely. And you know, drive is not something I usually associate with people with hair color like hers. Usually, it's you know, bombing hair color, fire bombing uh, buildings, and you know, sticking up for black people with even worse racism. Mm. But she is not one of those people, despite what her hair color may try to insinuate. So allow us to get into this interview.
right, welcome to another episode of Peace Freaks, folks. Me and Lizzie are here with Harley, who I'm sure all of you know from one of her personas that she goes by on the internet. Uh, in particular, I know her through Twitter because everybody seems to know her through Twitter. And I am trendy and just like to follow and do what all my friends say. So when they all have somebody on to talk, I have to eventually have that person on to talk. So how are you doing today, Harley? I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. <laughs> how are you doing over there, Liz? Oh, I'm I'm just stoked to be talking to uh, our, our cool guest today. Sorry, I've got to... You sound so excited. No, I'm sorry. I'm distracted now because our, our kid just came in and started poking me. <laughs> <laughs> so excuse me. Yeah, podcasting with children. It is uh, <laughs> It is exactly what it is. We'll just say that. <laughs> so we, the, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, Harley, is because in the circles that we tend to run, I find that there's uh, an abundance of... What's the phrase I'm looking for here? Single men. And I, I think that when you get into the politics game, they tend to approach things differently than, say, people who have families approach things. Um, now, this is going to be completely judging you off of your look because you look like the kind of people I would have hung out with in the, in the past. You're also not the prototypical square normie person. <laughs> and I'm always... I've just been fascinated by how people, I would say, of our ilk deal with the whole family and politics, like that kind of work, or that whole ah, politics life balance. Is that, is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess. Does it, is that something that affects you? Do you? Is it something that you think about a lot? I, I think about it a lot personally because I have to make a lot of decisions and how much of myself I reveal online, you know, how, things of that nature that I don't necessarily want coming back on my kid. Like, while I may choose to be a, a weird uh, anarchist, I don't necessarily feel like her life needs to be affected by that. So I may not always be as outwardly political as I want to be and kind of hold back at times. But if, if I'm understanding uh, your question correctly, um, I actually do not really try to push politics necessarily on to my children or how I teach them or their lifestyles as much as possible. OK, now. There are definitely some influences for sure. You know, I, I homeschool them because I don't trust public school. I try to teach homesteading and such because I want them to be able to take care of themselves if, you know, things go to shit in the future. You know, um, I, I try to... Wait, it can go more to shit than it already has? Oh, I'm sure it can. <laughs> I'm sure it can. And it never hurts to be prepared. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I try to teach them that. I try to teach them morality above legality. Definitely very much so. Okay. But it's but it's not like we're running around using the, the title. Oh, yeah, we're a bunch of dirty anarchists. And so we're going to do this because we're anar <laughs> you know, it's, it's not yeah, like yeah. that. I try to get them to just kind of think, OK, what makes the most sense? What's the most ethical to do? And just leave titles out of it as much as possible. I mean, the more time I spend around this stuff, the less I think titles have any value anyways. So, I mean, the minute you give yourself a title, all of a sudden I'm arguing with commie, uh, uh, and comms about stuff that <laughs> we probably don't even see all that differently if you really got into the nuts and bolts of it. When you when you start talking, what is private property versus uh, uh, what was what's the word that they use? Uh, personal property. And I'm like, well. I, I think that there's only personal property based on the definitions you're giving me. I don't private property would just be public property according to what you're talking about. So I'm all all perplexed on what we're arguing about in this uh, situation. <laughs> so how long have you been homeschooling? I, I should ask how old are your children if you don't mind? Uh, they're eight years old, and one's going to be seven next month. They've been homeschooled this whole time. Uh, how how is uh, the homeschooling situation where you are? I actually live in one of the best states in the nation for homeschooling. Thank goodness. It's one of the reasons why I don't plan on leaving the state in, in the near future. And uh, it, it's it, what's working out to our advantage for sure. Um, for a while, I was kind of doing a mixture of homeschooling and unschooling and just kind of trying to figure out their learning styles. You know, do you work better with worksheets? Do you learn better with this and all? And over time, we kind of started nudging a little more towards unschooling where I'll give them all the uh, resources they could need. Hey, what do you want to learn about? Okay, well, here's a bunch of this. And then I just let them kind of take, just pilot themselves and teach themselves mm -hmm. with what they're comfortable with. And so far it's working phenomenally. Oh, that's cool. Did you have like a specific school of uh, homeschooling in mind when you started? Like your Charlotte Mason or... No, no, know. no. <laughs> yeah. What's that one that you use, Liz? 
Well, no, that is it is Charlotte Mason. Um, I, I, we're doing Ambleside and stuff. We we thought thought about doing um unschooling, and we we kind of have up till now, but we started having to file like legal stuff. So it was so much fun asking permission to <laughs> opt out. Right, that little letter we had to send to the superintendent of our school district. Yeah, I believe it. Um, and also like the strewing thing got a little complicated for us because like our our kid is six and and doesn't really like to pin down her interests so it's kind of harder to strew if you don't have any (laughs) direction (laughs) yeah that's totally fair my kids figured out what they liked learning about pretty early on my son has uh with my son he's actually spent almost the entire day looking through cookbooks and and studying different techniques and everything because he wants to be a chef when he's growing so then he's oh not only that he was sitting there looking through um wildlife that is local to here that can protect his farm animals and livestock for this future garden that he wants and which animals would fight against the ones he doesn't want. I mean, he's literally been doing that all day long. My daughter's been doing it with him. My daughter actually wants to be a uh, midwife or doula. And so she, yeah, so she does a lot of time researching medicinal herbs and anatomy. She's, she's always been very fascinated with anatomy. So for me, it was really not that hard to pinpoint their main focuses. I'd still introduce them to other things for sure. Sure. But if they just wanted to dive into learning what they need to to be what they want to be when they grow up, then by all means, who am I to say no? Cool. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I'm just thinking, man, she she or does Irma even know what a doula is or a midwife? We, we've just been, no, we've been, sc- is... we've been screwing up. She watched way too much TV, I think. <laughs> I'm too into cartoons, well, apparently, is the moral of this story. To be fair, <laughs> it's because my mother wanted to be one. I had really difficult birth stories. She had really difficult birth okay. stories. And so... Ooh. While we were still living with my mother, um, because we moved back with her for a few years, uh, she was learning to be a midwife and a doula. So then my daughter was like, oh, I want to do that. And she just totally fascinated by the whole concept. And that was years ago. Can we compare birth stories? Because Liz's is pretty rough. I want to hear if somebody's got one that tops it. (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, no, uh, just I was uh, working like three jobs when we met and then got pregnant and was still manager at this restaurant at Chipotle. It's not really, I don't know, restaurant. Uh, yeah, using restaurant was an odd way of describing Chipotle. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. So I was still being a manager at Chipotle, like working these ridiculous hours and like not really slowing down. But at the same time, our apartment was above a midwife, like doula partnership. And so I decided I was going to like try and do the natural birth and I'll do a water birth. And like I had my birth plan and everything. Had no idea what I was getting in for, really. But, you know, I did enough research to be dangerous, essentially. And just got... How much How much of four days of labor do you actually remember, Liz? Yeah, exactly. Got three. I was going to say I got three days in, apparently four days in. <laughs> and... No, day four was at the hospital. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I got three. It was three days in, and at that point, like I was so paranoid because my um, midwife kept telling me, like, "Don't eat any sugar. You're, you know, like at risk for diabetes. You're gonna throw yourself off." Blah blah blah. So at that point, like I hadn't eaten much of anything for like two days because <laughs> I was Ugh. so paranoid about not eating sugar, and I didn't want to eat anything junky because I'm trying to keep my dr- granola mom straight cred but at the same time like I'm in labor and I'm exhausted yeah (laughs) I'm not eating and like we filled up the birthing tub and we've gotten out of the birthing tub and we've tried everything so I was exhausted the doulas went home and I finally just said you know what like like, I I don't know if I can keep doing this and this is actually funny how she remembers this because that's not at all what happened (laughs) oh okay well then you you were lucid yeah the short story is uh, she was completely incoherent on day three of labor. She'd already dilated to nine and a half centimeters and could get couldn't get past it. So we, we she actually undilated and, and we were kind of trying to let her rest a little bit and see if she could go at it again. Same thing hit nine and a half a second time. And so eventually, like I made the call. She fought me the whole way. I'm like, Liz, I'm sorry. We have to take you off to a hospital. You dilated almost all the way twice. It took everything you have. So we go in. We got lucky. We got a really good surgeon. We did, yeah. And she got her all good and shot up. and <laughs> Which was nice. And then, so on, on the shot, we go in there, and she hit nine and a half a third time. I did. So we ended up having a fucking C-section. I almost got in a fist fight with the nurse. <laughs> and, and the moral of the story is, after we go through this whole thing, our daughter came out beautiful and fine, and her grandmother tells her, oh, yeah, we, we all have C-sections because we, we don't have the 
hip with to uh, <laughs> have children naturally. Yeah. And you're like, you fucking think you couldn't have told me that before we right. went in through all this and we made all these plans and <laughs> For real. you could have been useful information. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, mm. apparently people didn't seem to give a shit. So there you go. God. That, that was. But it, ah, God, it's crazy to me. I, I'm, I want to hear how yours was, though. Oh, gosh. All right. So all throughout my pregnancy with my oldest, she was measuring about six weeks behind in size, not development, okay. just size. Yeah. And she actually dropped when I was 34 weeks along. Oh, wow. And so we were expecting her to likely be born somewhere around 37 weeks because my my three brothers and I actually did the same thing. We dropped three weeks ahead of time and then we we're born three weeks later on the dot. So we're like, okay, maybe this is what we're gearing up for. 40, nearly 42 weeks in. Oh. And she still dropped. She's still tiny. Uh, my hormones were going like crazy. I put on 65 pounds in just a couple of months that I couldn't even eat. I wasn't even holding down food and I still put on that much weight. Wow. And so um, they checked me and they're like, you have no signs of upcoming labor at all whatsoever. Just nothing. Nothing's happening. So, and then they're like, screw, we need to just get her out of there. Now I'm actually, uh, I have this whole conglomerate of genetic mutations that make medications either not just flat out not work or actually potentially very dangerous. And I get all the side effects instead. And I told oh, them goodness. that, yeah, they're like, we need to induce you. I'm like, you induce me, you give me any medication, it's going to go wrong. And so they're like, oh, we'll just give you a quarter dose and see what happens. Immediately, my placenta started just dying. My daughter's heart rate started just erratically going and they just went, fuck, we need to get her out right now. So emergency C-section and 10 minutes of them trying to give me a spinal tap and just missing over and over, oh, and over God. for 10 minutes. I'm screaming. I'm flipping out. I'm in tears. I'm in so much pain. You stay away from hospitals, don't you? It was horrible. It was absolutely, I normally do, but I didn't really have. I'd never go near one again. Oh no, I know. I had like, I didn't really have much of a choice and I wanted to do everything naturally, but, and so then, yeah, they, they take her out. She was only slightly over five pounds, 42 weeks long. And she was slightly over five pounds born. Lord, she wow. didn't have any of her, you know, their babies are born with that layer of brown fat. Yeah. But she didn't have any, literally none at all whatsoever. And um, they had a monitor for a while. She refused to breastfeed because she was so tiny. She just wouldn't do it. Yeah. And then of all things, they take her out. I'm just cut up. Spirit. P- keep in mind, pain medications also don't work. Oh my God. So I just had an emergency cesarean, unable to heal comfortably because these pain meds aren't working on. Me. And they took her out. They look at her and they said to me, she wasn't done cooking. She, wow. sh- she should have been in there longer. I was, I was pissed. I was absolutely. That is a shitty thing to say to someone. I was, I was pissed. I was beyond pissed. My son, I got pregnant with my son only six months later. So unfortunately, oh yeah. So unfortunately he had to be a repeat cesarean. His went a lot more smoothly. It was the aftercare that was horrible. <laughs> if you, if you know, yeah. if you know you're going into it, I mean, that's one thing. Like, yeah. Well, even with Liz, it was part of it. We'd planned on having a natural home water birth. And then all of a sudden, well, we're in the hospital now. Mm-hmm. What's, I will suggest that anyone, no matter what type of pregnancy you're planning on, get yourself a midwife because if for no other reason than to educate you on what your rights and things that you can legally get away with are are pretty important. Uh, having had her kind of coach us before going into the hospital system was very valuable. So I would recommend that to anyone. But yeah, that's <laughs> aftercare. I would imagine, yeah, that would, you, are you even fully healed when you, I feel, in that case? I mean, I have my scar and I have. Well, I mean, like, I mean, just six months after, like, I just. That's, oh, that's a pretty yeah. big scar. I mean, can yeah, you even no, heal that's, properly? that's just it. I wasn't, I mean, I was like yeah. healed, but not quite all the way healed. So then it wasn't, it, it, they pretty much just said, yeah, no, we're not, we're not even going to give you the chance to have a natural birth. It's just going to have to be a cesarean. Yeah. So that's what we did. My son was a lot bigger than she was too. So, yeah. um, but a much healthier pregnancy. Thank goodness. His was, I mean, it was, he was massive and uncomfortable, but otherwise he was much, he went much more smoothly. Well, I get the impression from like your photos, you're not exactly the world's largest person to begin with. So <laughs> I feel like any baby's going to immediately be not, uh, not comfortable. I mean, I'm five foot seven. I'm not that tiny. <laughs> that's pretty tiny. I guess, I guess for I, women. I'm above I, yeah, average. I, say, I guess for a woman, that's pretty, pretty normal. Yeah. I was gonna say, that's my height. And I know yeah. I'm small. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the average, the average height for women is like five, three or five, four. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really oh, not, yeah, okay. so I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not massive, but I'm not 
like I'm above average. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always this is just one of those fascinating things. Like you get a sense of a person based on like their online pers- yeah. persona and like the few little <laughs> photos you see. Oh, really? OK. I get that a lot. Everyone assumes I'm like five foot one, five foot two. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but we also tend to have really big babies. OK. On my side of the family, too. Like my, my youngest brother was over nine pounds. Oh, wow. And my mom is a big baby. Yeah. My mom, my mom's smaller than I am. So, I mean, you can only imagine how that went. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. Especially back in the day. Mm-hmm. So you do homeschooling. Uh, out of curiosity, what, what is your, your career, if you don't mind saying? I am a, well, I, well, I've kind of been out of work for the past few months thanks to COVID. But otherwise, my career is bartender. I was also a bartender teacher, but now I'm just bartender. So you were, you were part of that movie Cocktail. <laughs> yeah, I just um, work. I work in a movie theater bar. <laughs> doing bartender stuff. Nice. I, and see, that sounds like so much fun. Like I've I've never lived near a movie theater with a bar in it, and it upsets me. <laughs> yeah. Because I just really want to just go hang out and drink and watch movies. It just seems like the appropriate way to watch a movie. It's nice, but there are so many safety regulations that we have to follow. And people, of course, get mad at us. Like I made up the rules myself. And it's like, no, well, it's because <laughs> it's really, it's because there are literally children all over the place. So we have like much more strict rules. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, otherwise, you know, people get a pretty big kick. I mean, they're movie theater prices as well, but most people don't oh, seem gosh. to care. <laughs> Uh, that's, I'm really kind of curious as far as you see, you kind of probably have some inside information on like, what are you, what are your expectations for the film industry at this point? Like, is that ever coming back? Like your movie theater is done. To be honest, I don't really know exactly what's going on. My particular franchise um, was one of the first ones to close down and they've actually been, from what I understand, most other franchises are doing okay, but my franchise actually tried to pay their employees well for load as long as they could. I mean, like all the big shots actually took massive pay cuts to continue paying everybody else while they were out of work. Well, the goodwill so, would have been great when things come back if they if it worked yeah, out. Yeah, and <laughs> I know there was a lot of like legal issues trying to like save everybody and get us back on track. Now, from what I understand, my franchise is supposed to open anytime now within the next week or two, but we don't have that okay yet because um, state regulation. And uh, we only have one location in this in this city only two i think in general in the state and it's held at a mall and the malls don't have the okay to open yet so i have so that's what i last heard like three days about four or five days ago from from my boss but i don't know i i mean i I think the movie industry is going to be okay in the long run but my particular location i have no idea what we're doing none of us know what we're doing Jake here, host of the Tasting Anarchy podcast. Join my co-host Mason and I each week as we explore the world of wine and alcohol through a liberty lens. You can find us on all your major podcatchers, tastinganarchy.com or Tasting Anarchy on Twitter. Tasting Anarchy, your wine and liberty podcast. Find out how much government is in your drink. Well, I just know I've been following the quartering and even last week he was talking about like the massive amounts of debt that all of the major, uh, uh, what do you call it, major... Um, studios? No, not the studios. Well, yeah, those, but uh, the, the the theaters. Like, oh, okay. The, the theater, like, movie theaters, like, we're talking billions of dollars in, in debt yeah. at this point. Like, just basically, and, and, and the fact of the matter is, is that uh, I think the studios got a taste of the amount of money that they can make with, like, say, Trolls 2. Yes. Oh, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Cutting theaters out, may they make a lot more money. That was actually a pretty big um, issue with my franchise as well, because basically, yeah, if Trolls 2, uh, Universal, I think, actually made the agreement. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just release it to home like this. Just this one movie, see how it goes. It's going to be this one time. Yeah. And so my company was like, okay, yeah, sure. We can do that this one time. That's fine. And it took off really well. And then they went, screw it. We're just going to do this for forever from now on. So the CEO of my company just threw a fit and was like, hell no, this is not what we agreed on. And la- I don't know if this has been changed, but I heard that now 
my company is not going to be showing Universal movies at all whatsoever anymore. I don't know. Okay, I can I can almost tell which company you are based on that amount of information. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I know at this point, yeah, but <laughs> but um. Yeah, that's what I heard. I but this was months ago, so I don't know if that's yeah. true then. I've just been kind of tuning it out. <laughs> no, last I heard they were holding fast on that. Like Ugh. that's I mean, that's such a dangerous move even on their part cuz yeah. like they need those movies to get people into the doors. It's so it's so weird because like I can tell you right now, I'm not spending 20 bucks to rent a movie. Oh, no. yeah. But I guess if you're a family some to some people, yeah, it's twenty bucks to rent that movie, but I'm also not spending the extra forty dollars on refreshments for all the kids and then the tickets per kid. Like it works I out guess. to be a lot more money to go to the theater. That's why you get a nice tote bag and you sneak shit in the <laughs> tote bag. Okay. Right. Like I had a guy tell me his wife full on snuck in a rotisserie chicken one time. Like the possibilities are endless. <laughs> yeah, that, you see, they don't know how big your wife's breasts actually are. Right. There so you go. she stuffs her bra with rotisserie chicken. Yeah, there just you go. She's a busty woman. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, or even just, yeah, I've seen like you, you, you take a bowl and you shove the bowl full and you wrap, you know, you like tie the bowl to you and you look like a pregnant woman just bringing in food. <laughs> These are all genius ideas. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Look, honey, this is this is this is a cottage industry at this point. People have been doing well, this for ages. I mean, you know, my family used to do it too, but like we, you know, we were we weren't so, so innovative about it. I didn't I didn't realize the. Uh... Honey, you were like you were way deep in the hood. They didn't even bother. They knew that you guys weren't buying refreshments. No, they didn't care. It's true. We were going to the dollar show anyway. Oh, good lord. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious it, with everything going on as far as the coup goes. Has that changed your perspective on you know the way that you've been approaching things like i know on our end it definitely made us a lot more conservative about uh things as far as like we started really working on the garden in the backyard uh the like paying down the debts that we have became priority number one as opposed to like priority two or three to try and get as lean as possible for anything that may come down the pike or come down the pike are you uh are you expecting things to get much worse or are you just kind of playing things by ear has it changed you at all? Or are you just like, yeah, whatever. It's basically the same as we were before. I'm kind of just playing things by ear. I mean, there are some minor differences for sure. You know, like when, when things first started shutting down, no, I did stock up on like um, a dehydrator and emergency food prep storage, things like that. But it was already stuff I wanted to do anyway and teach my kids how to do. It was just like, mm. okay, now is probably the time to do it before things get worse. As far as things go with like gardening and such, you know, I, I try, but there's really only so much I can do when we're 110 degrees about five months of the year. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I try, but yeah, I can't really expect much. That just sounds like hell. Yeah. It's- <laughs> I don't, I don't, and, I don't, and you can give me, oh, it's dry heat though. It doesn't make any bit of difference. Oh, <laughs> Okay, you know what? 110 degrees sounds terrible. To I'm hear. never the one to say that. I'm never, as everyone else that says, oh, don't tell me it's dry. Okay, I never, I don't plan to make it better. Okay, <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> this, this, isn't, this isn't about you. This is about the fact that my little brother lives in Vegas ah. and continually tries to get me to move out there. Like, nope. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's it's not pretty. And we actually had a really crappy monsoon season as well. We, we usually, oh, wow. yeah, we usually get pretty good rains, which makes the summers at least more tolerable. We've had one day wow. and this is when the season starts to end. So I'm not exactly thrilled with that right now, but what can you do? I mean, yeah, that would make gardening very difficult to say the least. Yeah, it's very difficult. You also like raise animals, uh, don't you? you like, do, I think you were rabbits. Yeah, meat rabbits. You were, so you were my, my, our, my partner uh, from Free Market Screen Earth, Ben's podcast, and I'm trying to re- re- remember little details. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do meat rabbits. That's really the only livestock right now. I'm hoping to maybe get back into quail later. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're they're pretty easy to store and raise. They're tiny. They're quick and easy to clean. And they lay eggs like constantly. I mean, they're smaller, but you know, they, with how many they lay, it's not too bad. Nice. Compared to chickens and they take, they take so much less space. So I'm hoping to get back into that as well. Yeah. I've been super curious about that because, you know, we're in a, like a, well, not even a suburban, we're in like just a city neighborhood, a nice neighborhood, but you know, we're really, really close to our neighbors. So I'm like, what could I have that's like quiet and, and small? Yeah. Quail are really not that, if you get the, um, oh, what are they called? The Texas giant, I can't think of their names, but, um, they're they're fairly quiet. They're pretty good single serving meat birds and rabbits. Up, you know, the rabbits. They're not going to make a bunch of but yeah, bunch of noise. So, and they're also easy to store and raise as well. Nice. We uh we were at a friend's uh, house locally the other day, and he he does a whole bunch of animals. He's got what 
pecking ducks and runner ducks. And he's got two different types of chickens that he does. I was actually wildly surprised at like how little noise any of them actually made. Muscovy are great for that, actually. Hmm. Um, for those who don't know what a Muscovy is, because I didn't know what a Muscovy was until like three years ago. I still okay. don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it looks like it looks like a giant duck. It looks like a duck. Okay, but it's not a duck. It's it's its own thing, and they're they're pretty big. Does that have a cue in it? Muscovy, no. Okay. <laughs> They don't need water to swim in like ducks usually do. They're more like landfowl. Huh. And they don't make noise. They just kind of like like a broken squeaky toy where it's just like that hissing sound. That's all they sound like. And their meat is honestly more comparable comparable to like a, a Salisbury steak over like that greasy, rich duck meat. Huh. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's that's actually my preferred choice. They are fairly big. In fact, uh, I think they're actually used as guard birds in some areas of the world as well. They're they're big, and they have okay. claws. They actually legitimately have claws. Like oh, but they're so not. They're like dinosaur birds. Yeah, they're 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 pretty trippy. But um, I've never been attacked or, any, or by one or anything. You know, they're they're big, but you can just there's an easy technique. You just scoop them up, grab them. You're fine if you have to. Like they're not troublesome at all whatsoever for the most part. They'll kill an, an intruder. I have found uh, dead. So my, my, my brother used to have them. Uh, I have found like dead animals in their area that they've just kicked their asses because as far as they were concerned, it was an intruder. But as, lo- as long as they know they're part of the territory, they won't typically cause harm to other animals. Huh. Yeah. That's really interesting. They're really that smart. really interesting. Yeah, they're smart. Do, oh, here's, here, here's the question though. Do they look like they come from a Dr. Seuss book? Some kind of do. They have weird like, those bulbous weird like red gross looking heads. You know what I mean? Where it looks like their head is yeah, like yeah, boiling. Yeah. Some of them do kind of have that. <laughs> okay. That's why I, I love the, I love the runner ducks because they, they look like uh sneeches to me. They're hysterical. Like they just, they stare like have this weird body that's like stands up perfectly upright. And it like, it has like the bulbous butt. Yeah. But then it just kind of looks like a bowling pin on top. It kind of looks yeah. like a bowling pin on a rotisserie chicken. It's fucking hilarious. My, well, my brother had, my brother had those and he had Pekins as well. So um, they were all, all them plus the chickens and even um, some male rabbits all were just in one big enclosed area just living together. Hmm, that's awesome. Yeah. So you, I like the idea of having to do less as opposed <laughs> to more. Yeah, for real. Actually, if I could think of the name, I don't remember the name, but there's this one particular YouTube video I saw that was phenomenal. This guy's got like this huge farm and he had a barn set up where all of his rabbits were, stuff, were stored in these huge above ground cages Mm -hmm. with room for them to move around and then underneath were all of his chickens so the rabbit okay yeah so the The rackin house yeah yeah and um, i saw that's like that's like a i mean ultimately i prefer colony settings over the rabbits but for the for the rabbits i mean but i mean if you gotta make do that's a pretty good way to make do that is cool i'll take take your word for it I was gonna say. So, what kind? What kind of family do you come from? You have a, a, big, a big family or a small family? You grew up around a lot of people, or? Um, I have three brothers, so I guess some big in the sense where I had a lot of siblings, but it's not like I had like a bunch of cousins and aunts and uncles okay. all around or anything like that. It was pretty much just us, and then my grandma. Once my stepdad became part of our lives, we long distance had his family too. But yeah, I didn't really grow up with like a ton of family around other than immediate family. I'm curious because that's one of the things that's been real different for me with Irma is that I did grow up with a lot of family around. Liz kind of didn't. It was always just her, her mom and her two brothers. And that was the extent of it. Yeah. Whereas I grew up, Having like my grandparents are local. I had a lot of cousins, you know, I've got aunts and uncles that are fairly local, like probably had a hundred family members that lived within, uh, you know, a, a two hours of us. Yeah, that's definitely not how I grew up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and it's been a real adjustment for me, like, because there's a big safety net in having that much family that close that you can kind of take care of. Let's just say the idea of paying for childcare seems really fucking weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we just haven't, we, ha- we haven't done that yet. And, I guess me and mom don't just don't really do anything because of that. So it's a uh, it's been a weird adjustment in life. Well, yeah, not being able to leave our state. You mean? Well, that's that's an adjustment thanks to the coup. But my, my my parents live in New York State, and they were supposed to take Irma for a week and a half the a couple of weeks ago, and they can't because then they have to fill out paperwork with work saying that they were in contact with somebody from another state. Yep. 
So, you know, basically they're not going to see their granddaughter at all this year. And who the hell knows if they ever see her again based on the way things are going. Yeah, it's not pretty. <sighs> um, How is everything in your state as far as like the draconian laws? Uh, it's I ha- <laughs> That good, eh? I have not been very thrilled with how it's been handled. Honestly, um, the governor has just been an absolute twat throughout this whole time. As of where we stand right now, theoretically, our gyms and bars and such should be opening in the next week or two, supposedly. I don't know. But that's what we keep hearing. And then it just keeps getting extended. Well, any idea what that even is going to look like? Because like, so I'm, I'm a, also a musician amongst my day job and bars have opened and that they were at a certain point they reached full open. But now we're back to all bars have to close by 10 p.m. I have no idea because we've just been thrown around everywhere. It's absolutely Mm. insane. The rules and regulations have just been changing constantly. And not to mention the cities, the the mayors for each city all have the freedom to make their own rules for each for each city. So what the state may say may not be what the city wants. And it's just been whack. Like, I don't know where we are with mask mandates right now. I I know the required. I don't know when that's supposed to end. Mm. I can't I can't even find online anywhere just saying, yeah, this is when we don't have to wear masks in the city anymore. No clue. What is uh what is that your mandate require of you? Like is it when you leave your house? Yeah, everywhere yeah, in public. That's that's what we got now. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> if I no. go into a place I will, but Yeah. Yeah, right now it's everywhere in public. You go, you have to have a mask on. Um some places say you don't have to wear the mask once you get inside the building but that's well i say that but that was mainly the gyms until the gyms got shut down again so as far as i know everywhere is saying that they have to have them inside other than restaurants i don't know it's it's just been thrown around everywhere how do you feel about your neighbors given everything that we've seen happen in the past couple months because i'm having serious difficulties just even comprehending how these people believe the things that they believe at a certain point, they leave me alone. My my, I, I hardly have neighbors. <laughs> I, oh well, yeah. I have. I mean, my my neighbor across the street will every now and then pop up, and you know, if something. You know, she came up to my house a couple of weeks ago to let me know that she had a rattlesnake under her house, and it was just like, be careful. Oh, okay. Yeah, be careful. They got my dog, etc. Kind of stuff. But in general, we all just leave each other alone. I mean, one of one of the ho- the house next door, they're only here for a few months out of the year. They live in Maine the rest of the time oh, wow. yeah so i mean i don't really have a whole lot of neighbors that god i hope they're not coming back <laughs> <time soon. laughs> no, they're nice i've met them before they're they're not. actually there's a funny story to how um to when i first met them after moving here it could have gone so much worse than it actually did <laughs> okay so like you know i'm out i go outside and i knew one of my rabbits was due to give birth and so i went to go check her nest and there sure enough there's brand new babies i'm like okay great and i always stick my hand in and just you know how many are there are there any that are dead you know anything i should look for and i pull one i'm like oh that feels like a dead one pull it out and it's a cyclops oh no it's a cyclops baby it's a dead perfect condition just dead and so i i take it out and i call my kids out hey guys science lesson and i'm checking it out my neighbor comes up and she's like Now, let me just say, baby bunnies don't look like baby bunnies, not when they're born. But she saw me and she's like, is that a newborn bunny? And I'm like, I mean, yeah, but it's deformed and dead. And she just kind of starts laughing. Turns out she used to raise rabbits and she's also a science teacher. So I'm like, oh, "Oh, no way. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, that actually went a lot better than I thought it was would be for a first impression. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm just thinking I'm just thinking the type of people up in the Northeast and uh, they they frighten me. (laughs) But that's the only time I've interacted with them. That's it. Well, yeah, we just nice. leave each other. We all leave each other alone. Well, that's odd. Yeah, we don't have like a like we, despite living in a neighborhood, we don't have a ton of people that are, uh, I guess necessarily. Our our one neighbor is an older woman who is barely there. Like our immediate neighbor on the other side, it's a guy who just uses the garage to drink in. Basically, <laughs> like he he owns the property and it's just kind of like his hangout away from his house. He's got old cars <laughs> and beers, and that's it. Yeah, he he keeps his motorcycle and like his old uh, whatever 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 that car he called it was. It looks it's like a it's one of those ones where it's like a pickup half pickup half car. Yeah, like an El Camino or something. Or it's not an El Camino, but it's like it's the same type of vehicle. Okay, and it's like a it's like a co- competitor to the El Camino or some shit. <laughs> And he just stores them in the garage and gets drunk in the in the uh, driveway with people. Yeah, <laughs> I, guess, I think it's easier than taking them back to his place. And like, uh, it's, I think he lives like twenty minutes out of town, and so it's just easier to meet up with his buddies from work in town. Yeah, something like that. I think he said his daughter is supposed to be moving in at some point. Her and her boyfriend. I've seen them once. 
but they're dragging their feet if they're moving in. Because <laughs> he's been saying that for two months now, and it's still not there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fairly, I, I I live about half hour-ish from town. Mm-hmm. Um, from the, I should say, from actually like, getting into town. If you need like the other side of town, it takes like an hour and a half. Oh, but, wow. Um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, I live fairly rural, so I, thankfully I, I can avoid the pe- I've never even seen anybody around here wearing a mask. You know, my mm-hmm. neighbors have never worn a mask to come say hi to me. So I think all of us are kind of just like, screw it. We just do our own thing and not care. Nice. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I, this place does sound better. I was going to say, you know. I'm not sure where it is, but... Do you like your libertarian podcast host leather clad on a motorcycle running from Nazis in black and white? I'm sure my friend Eric in no way resembles that at all. But his Rebel with a Cause podcast is guaranteed to bring you that same rebellious spirit. Bringing in guests from all over the political wheel. Bringing with it his own personal blend of irreverence and dare I say it down home charm. So head on over to the Rebel with a Cause podcast and begin your own rebellion against Ugh. bad podcasts. Yeah, I don't know. Cleveland's been weird here because like people like it's almost neighborhood by neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Some of the, like like if, if you go like deep in the hood, nobody cares. But if you get like towards like the more integrated neighborhoods, then you start seeing it more. And in the white neighborhoods, you see it almost 100 percent compliance. It's uh, it's a little unnerving. <laughs> All the all the nice obedient little Karens out there, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, do you uh, do you have like a, a co op or at all that you're involved with, with homeschooling, or you just kind of do it all yourself? And I honestly, I pretty much just do it myself. I did like I tried to look into different co ops and other meetups and stuff, but honestly, I mean, they are just the definition of follow everything by the book and oh, how really? dare you go other. I mean, it, yeah. yeah, just very very status, very hoity toity. My way is the way. I'm like, you know what? That's <laughs> That's literally the opposite of what I'm trying to teach my kids. So like, yeah, screw it, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had a. I mean, so we we've been involved in a co-op, but yeah, guys, some of the people we talked to, uh, when all this kind of came down, it perhaps showed the true colors of some of the people in there, and yeah, perhaps they're not the people we want to have around our children all the time. Well, I mean, that's that's another big one too. Not like, okay, so my kids are not vaccinated, and and that's actually because. I cannot be vaccinated. I have some. Oh, okay. I have like very severe. Like I mentioned, I have a problem with the medications. Yeah. I also got the same thing with vaccinations. I've had multiple severe reactions to them. So my doctors are like, just don't even try it on them, especially with how fragile my daughter was. Like, just don't, you know, yeah. just do not. But there's just, I, I mean, I've seen like in the Facebook groups and stuff, I wouldn't even let my kids near them if they're not vaccinated. It's oh, like, well, okay, then <laughs> oh, you wouldn't even know if you were out in the wild, you, you know, like go at Walmart and your kid is just hugged a random kid. Are you going to go, oh, they're vaccinated? You're right. not going to do that. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. So, well, no, they'll, 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 a- they'll ask now. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I just, I just try to avoid that shit. Do you have your COV card? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I just. I, it's just not the kind of attitude that I want to deal with. Well, for me, it was weird. It was weird when the flags started going up. Like we got to start getting real patriotic, and I'm like, um, uh, how about no? <laughs> yeah, my son, my son would end up causing trouble because, like, he's not a. It's not like he's trying to start trouble, but mm-hmm. I mean, he's that kid that, like, I mean, he was actually once at the park with his dad, and this guy apparently walks up hey are you registered to vote blah 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 and my son flat out said voting is how you get people to do what you want without any trouble on your end or something like that <laughs> like he here yeah he like i mean again he used to live with my mom and stuff too my three brothers all anarchist family yeah he's heard a lot of discussion and now he just says and he's just and he'll just say like well why would i vote i want you to live your life that's not very nice actually well, at one point i guess he kept following them and he's like why are you not leaving us alone <laughs> <laughs> He just says it. And I'm just like, oh, gosh, imagine if this little 
he doesn't even know the word anarchy. But imagine if this kid started saying stuff like that. He'll flat out say, but I don't really trust the police. But I like, but I love, he'll say, I love God more than I love the president. I, so I'm going to listen to God. Like, that's literally the stuff he just says. Yeah. I'm like, anarchy. I don't even know what it is, but I love it. Right? Pretty much. <laughs> so I, I can only imagine the trouble he got. Uh. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. But yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, doesn't that just do your heart good, though? Kind of on a level. It does. It totally does. I mean, personally, I'm of a mind if we can just get him to move past this whole God thing too, oh, really do away with all of whatever. the, with all of the <laughs> statists in the world. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Well, we take what we can get. <laughs> Uh, so, so you're uh, you're a second generation uh, anarchist, then, which is I- interesting in and of its own right. How how what the hell? What, frankly, what is that like? I mean, to be honest, I was all aboard the I don't trust the government for the life of me train well before they were. Oh wow! <laughs> I um I had my own personal traumas. I started saying stuff really early on, like, well, who are they? To, they're strangers. Who are they to tell me what's safer for me and things like that? And my first, my mom was like, how dare you say that? That's, you know, but, I mean, she was appalled. But then over time, she started doing more research and then she was like, shit, you know? And yeah. after that, it spread It spread to everybody. Huh. So it's something that happened later in life. It's not like you were just born into like a no. family of anarchists and no. they raised you like the wild aboriginals and... <laughs> Yeah, no, it was actually a fairly, uh, um, especially from my biological father's side, it was actually a fairly right wing family, huh. to be honest. Yeah, I just I went through enough of my own. Uh, actually, discussed this in the last podcast I was in. I just went through enough government tragic backstory to start waking me up and going, "This isn't right." Who are you to tell me what what's safe for me? Who are you to say this is what's safer? I'm begging you, telling you this isn't what's safe for me, and you just don't care because legalities mm-hmm. and that just planted enough seeds that just sprouted more and more and more. And then it, you know, same thing with my mom over time, she dealt with enough of their crap and my brothers dealt enough with their crap. And then all of them were like, screw it. So yeah, it was definitely something that came on later in life. So it's probably the most complicated issue I find maybe more so in my position, but how do you deal with your kids and cop? Because it is, if something were to happen to me or Liz, um, I don't, you know, they've kind of forced out other options of helping children. Yeah. Other than maybe seek, seek out cops. But I don't ever, like, I don't ever want her to trust police. Like, that's not like, something that anyone should do, let alone a child. All right. So I have done my best to explain to my children that it's not like these are all just, you know, psychopaths running around hurting people. Mm-hmm. There are legitimately a lot of them out there who believe they're doing good. Mm-hmm. They believe they're doing the right thing. They, it, you know, they want to keep people safe, but they don't understand that they're not doing it in a way that's actually best for people. They don't really realize the consequences of their actions and what things might stem upon them. So while I personally don't want to call them because yeah, if if I can help it at the very least, you know, I'd rather learn how to take care of things my way. I don't want to get involved with them just in case something can go wrong. Mm -hmm. But with that said, it's not like I want you to run and hide if you see them. It's not like I want you to spin on their shoes if you see them, you know, treat them with respect. Yeah. So they know not to just be running around, you know, F the police and crap like that. Right. But they also know that they're human. Don't not, make yourself a target. Yeah. Don't make yourself a target. Sure. But they also understand like, look, they're to them, it's no different than people who vote. Okay. You know, it's okay. They think they're doing the right thing. They think they're, they're, do, they're pushing the right direction to make people safer. They don't realize the harm they're actually doing. It's that same mentality. And so I, they seem to understand it on that level. Yeah, okay, it's, it's interesting. I, I asked a question. I'm because we have the added complication of that we actually have a police officer in the family. No oh boy. So, <laughs> so navigating all of the everything that you just said, plus, well, yeah. How do you explain, you know, a family member being a, a boy in blue, so to speak? He doesn't live very uh, very close, so it's not a big deal to we don't run across him very much. I always joke that he's probably the more more libertarian of my family member, <laughs> honestly. But, you know, he's still, he's a, of that, like, as libertarian as you can be while still supporting Trump kind of crowd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oof. Like, kind of believes, the, maybe doesn't believe the lip service, but is more, he gets more afraid of the left than he, he is an advocate of freedom. Like, yeah, I would love freedom, but since it's not possible, I just want to keep these people from ruining it worse than it's already ruined kind of deal. Right. Yeah. See, and, and there's, I, I, can't, I almost can't argue with that because like, 
they do seem to ruin everything <laughs> and things get more and more ruined. Yeah. And yeah, I realize the right's not really any better, but no. at least it gets ruined slower. <laughs> Maybe right. See, and if I was in that situation, I honestly do not have any um, immediate family police. You know, my biological yeah. father tried to be one actually, but uh-huh. um, but in that situation, I would just be like, you know, he he's he's trying to do the right thing. He th- to, for what he understands, this is the right thing to do. I don't agree. This is the consequences I see. This is the bad parts that I see. They just don't understand that. So yeah. no, I don't want you to just treat them like crap. I don't want you to hate them because this is what they're doing. But I want you to be aware of the things that they are not seeing and why, yeah. I, you know, maybe you wouldn't want to grow up to be a cop or something, you know. That's probably a better way to handle it than just don't trust your uncle if he's in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anything else you want to get in, Liz? I've, I thought this has been a fun conversation. No, I mean, I love the homesteading thing. It kind of seems like it's it's uh, it was just kind of part of your life, though. Was that something that? Not not really. Oh, really? Um, okay. Not, not, no, I grew up like in a very uh, suburban area, Sacramento, there was no, I mean, I there, we did a lot of animal rescue, but I did not grow up homesteading. It was something that was encouraged heavily because a lot of my extended family d- did it. My okay. grandparents did it, but it was, it was not something I had the opportunity to get into until much later in life. Huh. So, yeah. So what made you want to get into it? Um, I mean, we, we kind of started like tiptoeing with gardening once I hit around 16, 17 years old. Okay. And, um, it was just something we knew we should do. We were just not in a situation to do it the whole time. Yeah. So once we got into like just growing up, my whole family, once everyone got into a better situation where we could do it, then it was like, okay, now we're going to do it. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I was just curious because like, you know, I, I grew up in apartments and stuff and like I have, have been really um, timidly sort of inching that way and wanting to do more. And, um, you know, this was just kind of the, okay, well, it's not going to get any better. So we might as well just <laughs> throw some <laughs> seeds out there. And, yeah. But um, yeah, no, I was just curious. Yeah. It's all baby steps. It, it, you know, you got to kind of, especially depending where you live, you have to kind of figure out what works best for your particular, there's, there really is no right or wrong way to go about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty. Sure. I mean, I feel like I could come up with some wrong ways. Well, to I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, but you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> you know, start rain, start collecting rainwater in the desert. Well, yeah, that'll get <laughs> you. It seems like in some probably not a thing to start with. In monsoon season, when it's actually a real monsoon season, it works, but yeah. not not this season. <laughs> it has been uh, remarkably dry even here. I found uh, personally mm. need one of those. It's been a weird. It's been a weird summer. It has been a weird. Summer. Probably the weirdest of my adult life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do constitute as an adult, right, Liz? Yeah, I, there's no way to avoid it now. We're in our 30s. We got to own it. <laughs> Honey, I'm closer to 40 at this point. Oh, shut your mouth. Just saying. I'm on I'm on the other half of the of the, my 30s. You're you're, you're going to be there in a couple weeks. I know. But I know. <laughs> I thought she was a 40 year old woman when I met her. I know. So what am I, I guess it's ridiculous. Uh, Harley, thank you so much for coming on. Hopefully, this wasn't wasn't too much of a <laughs> deep dive into things you don't want to talk about. Oh but, gosh, uh, no. I've, I've I've talked heavier stuff on oh, these. Trust me. Nice. <laughs> we, uh, you know, for us, I, I'm I'm just interested in hearing other people's stories because I think all, for me, community is probably the most important thing when it comes to people of our political ilk, and I think it kind of gets shortchanged all too often because we a lot of people just want to sit and bitch about politics. And I'm kind of over the politics thing at this point. I really just want to go and find people that I can trust that don't want to fucking throw my ass in jail for everything under the sun. <laughs> and then just make little communities and, and, and have, you know, make friends with people that I don't think are piles of shit. Maybe. No, I agree with you there. I do. So I, I, I appreciate you coming on and telling us a bit of your story. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me on. Uh, is there anything that you want to plug per se? A lot of you uh, know me through Twitter already. And a lot of you know, I'm also uh, the cryptid bartender. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And that's cryptid with a D, not cryptic. Otherwise, not much else to plug right now. <laughs> for, for the record, that's that was the first thing that interested me because I'm obsessed with cryptids. And I always <laughs> have been. Right, what was that TV show that I used to love? Liz, oh, back in um, the day? It was a family of cryptids. Yeah, no, I know which one you're talking about. It's it's slipping my mind, but I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> please please do so I can remember to go and find episodes of it. <laughs> there you go. But like I said, thank you so much for coming on, Harley. You have a, have yourself a good one. Thank you. You too.
right, babe. Well, what uh, what are your thoughts coming out of it? Very cool person. Uh, and she is, um, you know, kind of bearing up under the weight right now. And, uh, you know, I wish her the best. I mean, it was definitely a case like the, the world. What is it? What is that old? Uh, it's it's that basketball joke about uh, Cooper or whatever his name. Coop. Oh. The world sure does seem to be raining shit on Joe Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of that, but hey, she managed to keep her keep her head up on despite what everything kind of seems like it was going on in her world. And that sometimes that's all you can do. Is that all you can do, Liz? Yeah, keep doing good and uh, and get through it. I'm gonna go through and edit all this, so you guys aren't gonna aren't gonna see or hear some of these long pauses that I'm getting out of Liz because she is so ready for bed. That nap that we were talking about in the beginning <laughs> of the episode, I kid you not, like. Neither one of us wanted to come back from it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I knew I needed to. I knew I needed to record this episode for today and get it out. But man, oh man, the bed was just super comfy and was all calling to me. Yep. So we, uh, I had to force her into this, just recording this intro outro material. It just is not a bad thing. It is good practice, and we uh, love that you guys are here with us. So we are happy to do it. One thing I think we should I would like, I think we should talk about maybe maybe it's you know not uh, something people care about but it's been, it's been a point of pride for me recently is uh, a lot of the financial stuff that we've been dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know we uh, we paid off our car recently and that was like a three hundred dollar a month bill taken care of. And this is all stuff that we've started doing since uh, you know Cove. the change. Yeah, and we're been piling up that extra money from that into a consolidation loan that we picked up a couple of years ago and think we're going to pay, oh, like get to a point where we only owe $100 on that in uh, October. And so we're rolling into like, we just decreased our monthly bills by like over $600 a month. Yeah. Which I'm pretty, pretty excited about. And we managed to do that while at the same time, I've you know, we've still been putting $10 a week into Bitcoin, which mm-hmm. is up right now. So we've made money on that deal. Nice. Like last, like last I checked, we were like $27 in profit. For that deal. Nothing wrong with that. No. And we still got the IBC account that I'm just kind of letting sit until we have enough mo- um, enough money accrued in there to try and do something with. Yep. You know, because there's just not much in there right now. So there's a, you know, a lot of things that are kind of working out well. I opened up, finally opened up like a separate bank account so I can kind of keep money out of sight, out of mind. Like I have easy access to it if I want to spend it, but it's nice just kind of not seeing it in the account and going, not thinking about it. Yeah, because then you you can actually like let it pile up and pay off things. With yeah, it. no, it's been nice. That's a lot of how I've been paying off the uh, the one consolidation loan was just uh, all of my money that I've gotten from gigs or things that have been not like our direct paycheck, just added bonus money to the website in there. You've just been throwing that all over there, and ultimately, you know, I've had some large sums that I could throw on the uh, the debt and. Get us closer to freedom, mm-hmm. which is a big part of what we're doing here. Because, I mean, I think so many of us are on that journey now. Oh, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, us talking about this stuff helps out somebody else. Uh, like I said, folks, at the beginning, lots of changes coming with the show. Hopefully we can build this into something, build a community around it where, uh, you know, like I always joke about my punk's not dead, it's homeschooling bit. Like, I, I think there's got to be more people like us out there. Oh, yeah, I, I think so. Especially now. We get to put an Hop Ivy t shirt on the kid now. <laughs> if, only our kid, if only our kid would like an Hop Ivy t shirt, that'd be so sweet. Yeah, we just have to find one that's pink and sparkly. That wouldn't be an Hop Ivy t shirt. <laughs> and, and let's be honest, she would not like Hop Ivy at all. She'd be like, "It's yelling, Daddy! It's yelling! Why is it so loud? Put on some Kesha. There's, there's no, there's no beats. Why is there no dance beat? Why is there no <laughs> half naked woman? This is America. That's how we do our music." <laughs> And I suppose I'm not terribly against, uh, you know, half-naked women and beats and stuff, but, you know. It depends on the circumstance. I feel like my child should have more options than that. So, anyways, uh, why don't you all go? Have a good one. Take it easy. Make it magical. Peace. This podcast is a proud creation of the Mad Audio Lab. For more information, check out madaudiolab.com.
Peace Freaks is part of the Liberty Hippie Podcast Network. If you like what we do, be sure to check out Homesteads and Homeschools, Free Markets Greener, Cannabis Heals Me, and This Week in Liberpods. We're living proof that libertarian doesn't mean washed up Republican.